right, guys, today we are building the USS Grissom and the Klingon Bird of Prey set. Now, this is a snap kit uh, that's put out by Polar Lights. I think it's about two years old now, um, and it's in one one thousandth scale. Now, because these ships are going to end up pretty small, they did make it a two part set, which I really like. I like that instead of doing something out of scale or making you have to pay for a, a really small ship, they give you two. That's something that Mobius did on their small Viper kits when they did 172nd scale. Uh, they gave you two Vipers. I like that in this set, instead of getting the same subject twice, you get two different ships that make sense going together. The fact that these two ships faced off in Star Trek Three. Now on the box, we get some nice artwork of the two ships. Uh, we get a, a, a fair likeness of William Shatner from Star Trek Three, And we get a quote from uh, Christopher Lloyd's Commander Krug. And then just a little bit of a product description here and a shot of the decals. Now, just like all the other recent round two kits, uh, the inside box are all of the decal callouts for both ships. And just once again, a little bit of product description along the back. So here's our decal sheet. Most of the decals are for the USS Grissom. Uh, it does come with extra registry decal so that you can make it either the Grissom as seen in Star Trek three or one of either of the ships that are appeared in Star Trek the Next Generation. The Pegasus, um, the Vico or the Cochrane. Um, and they do a lot of panels here on the decals. Now, as far as the Klingon Bird of Prey, there's not going to be much at all. Um, we will be doing some um, Klingon writing for the registry there. And that's just about it. A few more Klingon insignias here. A little bit of texture to go on. Um, I believe this is part of the wing hinge panels there. They have labeled everything nicely. So if it goes on the Klingon Bird of Prey, the decal's labeled with a K. If it goes on the Grissom, it's labeled with a G. And if it's one of those Oberth class ships from the next generation, it's labeled with an O. So that should make it a little bit easier to work our way through those decals. All right, looking at the plastic, first we have the two stands for the ships. We get three sprues done in a pretty nice white for the USS Grissom. Then we get two bigger sprues uh, for the Klingon Bird of Prey. And we get clear parts. I believe all of these are for the Klingon Bird of Prey. Um, and the Klingon Bird of Prey, it looks a little darker in this video than it does in real life. It's a fairly light green, um, but pretty nice detail on it. Now looking at the directions to plan ahead, on step one, I find two things that I really like. These are the clear parts. Uh, this is going to be a clear part for the, for the photon torpedo launcher. This is going to be a clear part for the engines. And it looks like they don't get sandwiched between anything. They don't need to be put in early. I can leave those off until the very end and then just slide them into place. That's going to let me paint the majority of the Klingon Bird of Prey before having to deal with those clear parts. Uh, so I won't need to do any difficult masking off. Uh, the other thing that I'm really glad is kind of done separately is this railing. Uh, that has to be a different color than most of the ship. Um, so instead of having to paint it very delicately, I could just paint the ship, paint that separately, and then attach it. Along the same lines, um, looking at the last step line ahead on the USS Grissom, it looks like I can make the top section entirely separately, paint it and decal it. I can do the bottom um, entirely separately, paint and decal that. And then once both of those are finished, I can join them. That'll save me from having to reach between the two halves to decal the bottom of the saucer or the top of the bottom hole. And it looks like building this is gonna be a pretty simple job. Um, I really just wanna make sure I'm taking things off the sprue very carefully with some of my snips. 
especially on parts like this, where if you get that wrong, you're gonna kind of ruin a little bit of the silhouette of the ship. So I'm gonna snip it a little further away and I'll use a file to kind of file that down to get a good looking um, finish to that. Now that we have all the parts off and cleaned up, it's actually a, a really simple job here doing the construction. There's only 10 parts. Uh, so the bottom half, we're gonna snap together. And we're not gonna do any more on the bottom half as far as construction. We're gonna leave this so we can decal these top surfaces. Um, it looks like we do have seams in here. Hopefully once we get things cemented, those seams will be a little bit less. Assembling the top section, uh, you can't do it wrong. These parts are keyed, uh, so it will only go together with the right orientation. So once again, you have a bit of a seam here, and hopefully with some cement and just pushing down, hopefully that seam will disappear. Uh, it's a smooth surface, so it wouldn't be hard to putty that if you have a seam left over, um, since you wouldn't have to worry about any detail being sanded off. And then for the rest of the nacelle, you have these two grill parts that get snapped together. And that's a tighter fit than the others. And then that's going to just snap to the bottom of the nacelle like this. All right now it looks like I didn't clean this part enough when I got it off the sprue, left a little bit of a plastic nub right here. That's keeping these two from joining together well enough. So I'm gonna pop these two apart, file that down and see if we can get that to fit a little bit better. Yep, that's going to be much better. All right, now, even though it's a snap kit, I'm going to be gluing it together. And the biggest reason why I'm going to be gluing it is my liquid cement will actually melt the plastic. So if I put a little bit of plastic cement right here, push it together, um, it'll really help fix the seam without having to putty or sand it. We're just going to put in a little bit. and press it down and those two parts are just gonna melt together. After that, we'll probably take some 600 grit sandpaper, go over that seam, and hopefully it'll disappear under the first coat of paint. Now that the glue is dry, we're just gonna do a little bit of wet sanding uh, just over all the seams and parts where we glued, just with some 600 grit wet dry sandpaper and some lightly wet plastic. So I'm still not really happy with the seam along here. So we are gonna use a little bit of putty, um, probably right here and right here. Um, on the saucer, I can still kind of see that seam, so I'll use a little bit of putty there as well. 
All right, moving on to the Klingon Bird of Prey, you can see we have quite a few more parts. Of course, it's it's much more complicated of a ship. Uh, you do get an option to build it with the wings kind of flat or the wings kind of down to be in attack mode. So you get a couple choices here. I'm going to pull these ones away because I'm going to have mine in attack mode with the wings down. There are many parts where the molded details on the top and the bottom, so you don't have to sandwich things together. And one of the more interesting parts is you do get a clear part that gets sandwiched into the ship here. So if you wanted to light the ship, you could have some lights shining down here. I believe there's landing lights on the ship that point down there. Now, this is a little different than the Grissom. Since this isn't a Federation ship, it's not smooth and sleek uh, like the Grissom is. So I don't think I'll have to putty a lot of these seams. I think once I get a little bit of glue to hold everything together um, and get things pretty tight, I think it'll be just fine. Um, there's a lot of overhangs and uh, parts where the ship just naturally has panels that fit together. I don't think anybody will really notice where the parts fit together. Okay, now I have most of the Klingon Bird of Prey uh, put together. Still have to put the little railing on here and the photon emitter. Uh, I have a couple thoughts on this. First, I'm not sure how you would put on these guns if you didn't glue it. Uh, there's not really a snap to really hold those in place. Now, the next thing is I'm a little disappointed in the instructions because it really makes it seem like I can put these two halves together in step one. And then in step two, that I can push this part on separately. And so that's what I've done so that I can kind of point these separately. But looking at this, I really don't think that that's possible. I think I would have had to sandwich in these tabs in between the two halves uh, before I started. Um, I don't think I can just push this in and get to snap in place. Um, and even if I can... I'm going to be rubbing a lot of paint off of this side here. Now, the only real seam work I'm doing on the Bird of Prey is on these little parts right back here, uh, filling in those gaps. Um, the only other place where I see gaps really at all is right here. And I'm not going to do much with that, uh, mostly just because there's a lot of detail that could be sanded off there. So I'm going to probably let that be. Now, when it comes down to paint choices, the Grissom is really easy. Uh, we're going to put white over the entire thing. And then we're going to use something like flat aluminum on uh, the parts that need to be uh, silver. The Klingon Bird of Prey, that is fairly different. We've got to think a little bit more on the paint. Now, I have a Klingon Bird of Prey that I really, really like. Um, I like the muted greens and the kind of different shades of greens that I've done on this really big Klingon Bird of Prey. Uh, so I'm going to try and make kind of a dusty green uh, like I did on this. So to, for that, I am using light gray, and dark green. Uh, the dark green instead of regular green um, because it's more of an olive and not a bright green. Um, so I 
feel like this is pretty close to what I did on my big bird of prey. Now, looking at the underside of the ship, the one thing I don't want is I don't want Christmas colors. So I don't want Christmas green. I don't want Christmas red. Um, I want something a lot more muted. Um, so I've got the right green, I think. On this old one, you can say I went really with kind of a burnt orange color for the underside of the wings. I'm going to go more red on this one. So I started off with some red paint and I've mixed it with um, deck tan and a little bit of copper. Um, so on this build, I'm going to be having kind of a dusty pale red color for the underside of the wings. All right, so what I'm doing right now is I'm darkening some of the areas on the USS Grissom. They're supposed to just be a little bit more of a gray rather than the Federation white. I'm using an oil-based stain uh, that flows really nicely into those grooves. And if you get a little too much of it or if you get it kind of outside of the panel lines you're trying to darken, you can clean it up with just a little bit of paint thinner. I think it'll nicely darken those areas. Um, without hiding the texture that's underneath. Okay, so here's how the Grissom looks. We used a little bit of a wash to bring out these details on the inside. And we, of course, we did the airbrushed white and the airbrushed silver. Uh, we also have just a very light blue to accent those struts. On the top, we did a little bit of hand painting blue for the impulse crystals, a little bit of wash to bring out the detail by the silver and we did a little bit of hand brushing uh, to do the nacelles. So that is just about everything we're going to do on the Grissom. Here's our Klingon Bird of Prey. Uh, so you saw we airbrushed the green, the silver. Uh, our red, um, I really like the red. It turned out to be kind of a terracotta red, uh, a brick or a clay red. Um, I think that's gonna work really well and I've done a gloss coat of clear on all of these. On the Klingon Bird of Prey, I have also done um, the back engine, just a little bit of hand painting some of the green accents, and I airbrushed clear red across the back of it. I airbrushed the copper railing uh, that goes around the front of the ship and a little bit of hand painting uh, some silver onto the guns. Now it'll just be time to uh, kind of finish assembling those parts that we've painted. Okay now from this point uh, these ships are going to go in very different directions. Uh, the Grissom, as a Federation ship, we're going to keep it clean and glossy like this. And we are just going to cover the entire ship with marking decals. Uh, so all that's left on this guy is just decal after decal. Now for the Klingon Bird of Prey, uh, now we get to have a lot of fun with the painting. So we've done all of our base colors. Um, what we have to do next is just making it a Klingon ship. Uh, so lots of weathering, 
uh, lots of breaking up a lot of these panels. And what I'm going to start with is a panel line accent. Uh, so I have a gray panel line accent, and this is really close to my green. Um, the nice thing about this is it's going to be very, very subtle, and being gray rather than black, um, it'll make those panel lines uh, even more subtle, and it will serve to kind of lighten uh, the entire ship up. So I'm going to use this panel line accent um, just to start breaking up all of these panels. We're just going to drip it right in those lines. It's going to get pulled in, and you can see how subtle it is. All right, here's the Klingon Bird of Prey after that um, wash of the gray panel line accent. And so you can see um, we just have a little bit of gray accent. It's very subtle um, in a lot of those crevices. Um, it's something where it does help to differentiate all the little panels, but it is so subtle that it can kind of disappear um, if you kind of change the way you're looking at it. So I like that effect very much, especially down on the underside of the wings. Uh, the way that panel line wash has just kind of filled those in and given some definition uh, to kind of the feather pattern. What we're going to do next is we're going to do a black wash into these parts, which I believe are supposed to be windows, to make those stand out. Once you let that set just a little bit, you come in just with a Q-tip with a little bit of thinner and wipe away the excess, leaving it just in the windows. All right, there are the windows after using a Q-tip to just wipe away some of the extra. All right, it's been a pretty eventful couple of hours. I've been putting on quite a few of the decals on the Grissom and you know, honestly, I've been having some trouble with the decals. Um, most of them have been cracking. Um, so kind of having to piece them together as I put them on the model. Um, I've tried different things. I've tried different temperatures, letting them soak longer. Um, but still, I'm having quite a bit of cracking on those decals. So uh, we're going to set the Grissom aside for a little bit and work on the Klingon Bird of Prey. And as you can see, it is coming along pretty well. Uh, now, what I want to be doing is um, breaking up these feathers and giving different panels different kind of colors and accents. So what I've got is a Tamaya weathering kit. I've got a couple very small makeup sponges. And what we're going to be doing is uh, just using some of these sponges to add a little bit of color to some of these panels. So we're going to get a little bit of the weathering powder on the sponge, and then we're just going to brush it on some of these panels. All right, we'll wipe it off a little bit um, so it's not as dark, but then we're just gonna come over here to some of these feathers and do the same thing. We're going to vary it with a couple different colors here.
All right, I think that's going to wrap things up a bit for my build of the Klingon Bird of Prey and the USS Grissom. I still do have some decal work on the Grissom, um, and the decals did work a little bit better towards the end, uh, but still a little bit more difficult than I've come to expect the round two decals to be. Uh, but I think it is a very, very nice kit. Um, the Klingon Bird of Prey is absolutely the star of this set. The Klingon Bird of Prey um, was more fun to work on, more fun to paint and to weather. And overall, I think there's more places on my shelf for the Klingon Bird of Prey. Of course, the first pairing on the shelf that you think of is the Bird of Prey, kind of squared up against the USS Enterprise from Star Trek III. Or you could redo the Enterprise to be from Star Trek VI, and you'd have a wonderful pairing right there. Here's a shot of kind of the Federation ships from Star Trek III. And I think you could have a very nice display kind of with all three of the Federation ships from Star Trek II through IV. And of course, the um, Excelsior and 1 1000 scale from Star Trek III would go along very, very well with these as well. Now, if we want to talk value, um, I feel they're a fair price and fair value. And remember that Mobius set, which is about the same price. It comes with two Vipers. I think what you get is pretty similar you get something that's pretty similar in size, build, and heft. Um, so I don't think this set is a bad value, but I think it is probably one of the weaker values in the current Star Trek line. I think that really one of the best values out there in a Star Trek model is a 1 1000 scale refit, uh, just kind of in size, how well it displays, um, and kind of the fun to build it up. I think the better bang for your buck is probably something like the refit. And really, I feel the absolute best value out there in Star Trek modeling right now is to get the refit and the Reliant with that separate Aztec sheet. Uh, get all three of those. And that's probably your best bang for the buck. Those two as a display piece on your shelves. Uh, but I don't think anybody is really going out and getting the Grissom and the Klingon Bird of Prey as your first Star Trek model set. Uh, this is really something you get after you have most of the hero ships, when you're looking for something um, to kind of keep building and to kind of make some more fun displays. Uh, so I, I think it's a good kiss set. Um, I am glad they kept it in scale with the other ships, even though it makes these ones a little bit smaller. And overall, it was a good experience getting to build these. So at the same time I was doing this video, Eric on our Facebook page uh, was actually building the same set. And it looks like Eric really didn't have any of the decal problems that I did. And when I saw Eric's build, I really thought uh, I wanted to include it in the video to really show you how good the Grissom can be. I didn't think my build was quite a fair example with the decal problems. So I want to make sure you guys get a look at this ship that Eric did um, to see how well this kit can really come together. And really the decal problems I had uh, are a little bit more of a fluke than anything else. And of course, here's Eric's take on the Klingon Bird of Prey from the very same set. So once again, make sure to check out our Facebook group and the forums at allscaletrek.com to see many other builds along these lines. All right, so those are my thoughts on the USS Grissom and the Klingon Bird of Prey. Uh, it's a model you can find in most hobby stores by Polar Lights right now. Um, over the next few weeks, we are going to be adding another 1 1000 scale ship to our display. We're going to be doing the USS Excelsior. We will also be following it up in a little bit with one more 1,000 scale ship, the USS Defiant, um, which, unlike the others, will not be a movie line ship, but should pair nicely with the Voyager that comes out this spring. All right, guys, let me know your thoughts on the build, uh, any hints you have on decals that crack, um, any idea, any hints on 
um, ways to weather up the Klingon bird of prey, let me know. Uh, we'd love to read your comments. Thank you for following the channel. Thank you for following the forums at allscaletrek.com. And we'll be back soon.